of the opposition. Yeah. 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 Mr Speaker, if I may, I would like to pay tribute to Mandy Damari and her family for the strength yeah. that they have shown. And we on this side of the House, and I'm sure the whole House, continue to seek the speedy release of Emily Damari and the other hostages. Yeah. 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 Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister talks about immigration. I think it's probably a good time to remind him that he was the one writing letters asking us not to deport foreign criminals. Yes. Yes. And he and his party voted against every single measure that we put in place to try and limit immigration. But, Mr Speaker, the question today is what has been on the lips of all Labour MPs, including, I believe, the Health Secretary yesterday. The Prime Minister knowingly appointed a convicted fraudster to be his Transport Secretary. What was he thinking? Mr Speaker, the transport, previous Transport Secretary was right when further information came forward to resign. What a marked contrast to behaviour in the last 14 years. And, and, and she talks about immigration, record levels of immigration under the previous government, nearly a million. Net mon- and she was the cheerleader. She was the one urging on the removal of the caps for work visas. She was thanking the previous Home Secretary for the work that was done. She championed it. She advocated it. Record numbers of immigration. Mr Speaker, he's obfuscating, but I'm going to keep him on the topic. He owes the House an explanation. He said that the the former Transport Secretary uh, was only asked to resign after further information came to light. What What was that further information? I'm not going to disclose private conversations. Further information came to light. The Justice Secretary resigned. As I say, what a marked contrast. Whilst she's obsessing with the uh, Westminster issues, we're getting on with fixing the mess, fixing the foundations, that £22 billion black hole, our prisons bursting. Uh, uh, Mr Speaker, as we found out last week, nearly a million net migration numbers because of the Tory open borders policy. Mr Speaker, I'm not asking about migration, I'm asking about the former Transport Secretary. He... He never answers any questions. He never answers any questions. And it looks like he didn't ask his Transport Secretary any questions either. The truth is, he appointed a person convicted of fraud to the Cabinet. The first thing she did was bung hundreds of millions of pounds in pay rises to her trade union friends. Wasn't this a fraud on the British people? Uh, No, Uh, Mr Speaker, she says she's not talking about immigration. I'm not surprised. Uh, And I I, I advise her and all of them not to talk about the economy or immigration for another five years. Mr Speaker, he can try and change the topic as much as he likes, but the public are watching. He owes them an explanation. The country needs conviction politicians, not politicians with convictions. Now on to an even bigger fraud. Now on to an even bigger fraud, the budget. Last week, the Prime Minister failed to repeat the Chancellor's pledge of no more borrowing and no more taxes. It is obvious that they are coming back for more. In his manifesto, he committed to making Britain the fastest growing economy in the G7. Does he stand by his own pledge? Mr Speaker, I gently remind her that two of her predecessors had convictions (laughs) (laughs) for for breaking the Covid rules. I also invite her to look at the OECD report of this morning, which has upgraded growth for next year and the year after, which now puts us on target to be the highest growing major economy in Europe in the next two years. She should welcome that. Mr Speaker, I saw the OECD report and what it said was that they will be coming back for more taxes. And I think the whole House would have heard him fail to repeat his own pledge. He can't even repeat the pledges that he made just a few weeks ago. We are here to stop him from damaging the economy and that is why we are... I want to hear the question. Can we burn off? <laughs> Mr Speaker, they are laughing the same way they all laughed during the budget when they talked about raising NI. They have no idea what people out there are dealing with. And that is why, that 
is why yesterday we voted against his damaging jobs tax. Even former supporters, Chef Tom Kerridge, who endorsed Labour at the election, said that the budget was catastrophic. He built a real business employing young people, unlike his cabinet of trade union stooges, CV embellishers, and an actual fraudster. None of them have ever run a business. Why won't he listen to business who are saying his budget is catastrophic? Mr Speaker, I thought the scripted jokes were over, but we had another one about um, <laughs> lectures about the economy from the party opposite. They broke the economy, mortgages through the roof, and a £22 billion black hole. And she, compla- she talks about national insurance. She complains about the rise in national insurance week after week. But then two weeks ago, she says that she wouldn't reverse it. She signed trade deals, Mr Speaker, that had farmers protesting in Whitehall. Now she pretends that she's their champion. She campaigned to remove the cap on migrant worker visas, and now she pretends she's furious about the open borders policy of the last government. Mr Speaker, the fact is the Prime Minister has discarded his own Labour leadership promises. He's dropped the five missions he said would define his government. He's ditched his pledge to make Britain the fastest growing economy in the G7. We left office with UK the fastest growing economy in the G7. And business is saying he has damaged the economy with his budget. Tomorrow he's going to have an emergency reset, Mr Speaker, just five months into his premiership. But why should anyone believe a word he says? Mr Speaker, the only relaunch on that side of the House is the leadership bids of her rivals. She obviously hasn't read the OECD report this morning. The fastest growth in the next two years of any major economy in Europe. We're proud of that. And they should never be allowed to forget the damage they did to our country. They used Britain like some sort of mad scientist experiment. Open borders, unfunded tax cuts, neglected health service. And now, now, all the madness is still coming out. They say they should be back in office. They haven't listened, they haven't learned, and they certainly haven't changed. There's only one party that's driving this country forward, and that's this Labour government.